Adrenal tumors are commonly seen incidentally, and for majority of cases, no further imaging workup is needed. But when can we make the diagnosis of an adrenal adenoma, and when do we need a further imaging workup? To answer these questions, we should work our way through a flowchart that makes this approach easy and simple. So let's say that we see an incidental tumor in the adrenal gland. The first thing we look at is the non-enhanced CT, that is, CT performed without any contrast. And don't worry, if we only have a contrast-enhanced CT, we can work our way around this. I will come back on that later in the video. We know that 80% of adenomas are lipid-rich, and since fat density on CT is below zero Hounsfield units, we can use the density as the first step. If the lesion measures 10 Hounsfield units or lower, we can reliably diagnose adenoma and no further imaging is required. However, if the tumor measures above 10 Hounsfield units, the diagnosis is indeterminate. This does not mean that the tumor is malignant. In this case, the clinical history is essential. Are we dealing with a young and healthy patient, and is the tumor small and homogeneous? If yes, then the chances of this being a lipid-poor adenoma is overwhelming, and in most cases we don't need any further imaging workup. However, if we are dealing with a patient with a known primary malignancy, we will need further imaging. There are two studies that are helpful in the workup, either an MRI with in-phase and out-of-phase sequences, or a CT washout. Let's start with the MRI. The principle behind the MRI is that adenomas will contain intracytoplasmic lipid, which may be undetectable on CT. If the lesion contains fat, there will be a signal drop on the out-of-phase sequences compared to in-phase. One trick, if you don't know which sequences are which, just remember that out-of-phase will have outlines on the organs. If the lesion shows no signal suppression, the diagnosis is indeterminate and in these cases we might consider a biopsy. I think it's important to add that there are some malignancies that can contain intracytoplasmic lipid and thus might mimic adenomas. These include metastatic clear cell renal cell cancers, metastatic hepatocellular carcinomas and liposarcoma. Now let's look at the CT washout. As the name implies, this study measures the contrast washout. We measure the Hounsfield density before we give contrast, then during portal venous phase, and finally 15 minutes after contrast injection. With these measurements, we can simply calculate the percentage of washout using the following formula. Before contrast is given, we measure 16. During portal venous phase, the density is 112. And finally 46 at 15 minute delay. This gives us a 69% washout, which is diagnostic for adenoma. If we don't have any pre CT, we can lose the relative washout. And in this way, we can bypass the first step of the flowchart, as I mentioned before. And with this formula, the relative washout above 40% is diagnostic of an adenoma instead of 60% with the absolute washout. If the absolute washout is below 60% or the relative washout is below 40%, the tumor remains indeterminate. Just like before, we would consider a biopsy for further workup. But remember before you apply this flowchart, always check for a previous study. Your incidental finding might actually not be incidental. Now I hope you found this video helpful and simple. And if you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. Until next time.